Book One, Chapter Nine, Tears. Back in school, Charles and I have plenty to talk about. Max is changing his ways. He spends half his day with his group of girls and the other half with us. Max has lunch with us because it is longer than the recesses. Charles always teases him about how he is giving up his girl talk to be with us. Finn, how is your dog? Max asks. What did you call him again? Cloud, Sky something. I smile and reply. My dog's name is Sky Charles. It's a cool name. Max with a wink says, yes, yes it is. Charles pipes up and adds, I know it's a cool name. The days are getting longer in the classroom. The weather is warmer and we all want to be playing outside. There are only a few months before school is out for the summer. I know that I'll be able to spend much more time with the animals at the shelter and being outside with Skye. Everyone is still saddened by the girl who ended up with 10 stitches along her chin. My teacher has talked about it several times and the impact that this experience will have on her. She will have a scar where the stitches were and he says that each time she looks in the mirror, she will have a reminder of harshness from another. What a shame, he says, to have the incident happen for no good reason, no reason at all. And she will live with the scar, perhaps not only for the world to see, but for her heart to feel. He has gone on to say that it is possible the ones who cause the pain will also have the scar of heartache, for they will know each time they look into the mirror what happened that day, a day when all could have been prevented. When he shares the story, there is a look on his face that makes you feel deep compassion for another. I am sure that if anyone had been around that day, they would have thought twice before picking on another. My teacher says it is something that each will live with. He thinks that forgiveness is the one thing that can heal a painful memory. Forgiveness, I think to myself. I haven't thought about my love class for some time. And when we speak of forgiveness, I know that the topic of forgiveness is to be part of the class. Forgiveness, I ponder. What exactly does that mean? To forgive another or to forgive ourselves for doing something we feel has hurt another? With Max hanging out with us at lunchtime, the bullies in the class have left us alone. I think they are leaving us alone because of what happened that day in the washroom. For I believe that it was a valuable lesson for all of us. It was a reminder of how something that seems innocent at the time can become a painful event. I can't wait to get home to play with Skye. My dad has painted the doghouse, giving it another coat so it'll last a long while. With Skye not being able to use his house, he has been tied to the tree in the backyard. My mom and little brother take care of him while I am in school. My mom says that for the most of the day, he is quiet. But when he is ready to play, my mom sends out my brother. My brother laughs a lot when he is around Skye. He plays with him, but knows to go easy because Skye is very gentle and timid, even though he knows he is safe. When I get home, my mom is in the backyard sitting with my brother and Skye Charles. She is reading a letter that she has received in the mail. She has a very worried look on her face, which I notice right away. Mom, is everything okay? I ask in a soft tone. Oh, Finnin, I'm afraid not all letters hold good news. She starts to cry and I don't really know what to do. I don't think I've ever seen my mom cry. I know she does, but she usually keeps it to herself. I heard her crying once, but I've never seen it. I sit down beside her on the back porch stairs with Sky by my side. Mom? Please tell me what is upsetting you. She says, I would like to share with everyone at supper so everyone can hear my story at the same time. I would also like to speak with your dad before I share around the table. I look down at the ground, my heart feeling really sad, knowing my mom is sad. Sky places his head on my lap and we all just sit in silence. Sometimes just being with someone while they are upset 
can be the best thing one can do. Sometimes not saying anything says everything. I'm not eager for supper. I don't know how bad it is or how bad it is going to be. I guess we will find out. We are all called for supper and we take our regular seating. Sky takes his usual position between my dad and I. We all just sit quietly as we know my mom is upset. Supper looks delicious. I say, Mom, you made my favorite. She replies, I think it's everyone's favorite. We all smile as the servings are placed on our plates. It is a recipe that has been in the family many years. Mum says that her mum made it better. My dad, with a twinkle in his eye, says, No, darling, she made it best. We all start to laugh, including my mother, who is appreciating that he broke the ice, so to speak. My mom says, I know you have heard me on the phone late at night talking with my brother. I have heard her on the phone, but I didn't know she'd been talking with my uncle. We don't see my uncle often because he lives far away. They are having trouble deciding what to do with a piece of land that their father has left them. My uncle wants to sell it. My mom wants to keep it kept in the family to enjoy. My mom says that people often don't see things in the same light. The letter that arrived today was from my uncle, forcing my mom to sell the property because that's what he wanted. I ask my mom, what do you want, mom? She looks straight ahead, just like Charles does, and with a sigh, she replies, I want to keep peace in the family. I also want to keep the land that our father wanted us to have. I want you to be able to walk on the land. It is full of trees and nature. My brother wants to sell it to a potential buyer that will remove all the trees to construct a building, a big warehouse. We all sit quietly, now with empty plates. Mom, I ask, why would our uncle want to sell the land when he knows that you want it for your family, our uncle included? She replies, there is a lot of money to be made, and he feels the time is right because there is a buyer. Couldn't you buy the land to save the trees? Mom replies with a tear, no, my love, our family does not have the money to buy the land. It was a gift. We just see it in different ways. She does point out that if the land is sold, it will greatly help out our family for the future. It will help pay to further our education. The time has come for dessert, a box of donuts purchased from a bakery down the street. A very nice lady owns the bakery. My mom says that we should keep going there because the big bakeries are taking much of her business. My mom likes this bakery because she says as the owner makes everything from scratch. I don't understand what that means, from scratch. My mom smiles and says, from scratch means using all wholesome ingredients, not prepared like a cake mix you find on the shelf that you just add eggs to. I like donuts from any bakery. I'm always grateful when I get to choose the best kind. It's easy because we all like a different flavor and my mom knows what kind we all like. My dad has the one with all the chocolate on top. I like the one with the powdered sugar. It's really messy, but it's really worth it. It is time to walk sky before the evening becomes too dark. I give my mom a hug as she collects the plates off the table. I ask, can I help you with cleaning? She replies in a soft tone, you may help tomorrow, but for tonight I'm good on my own. I like to sort out my thoughts and cleaning is the best way that I know to do that. Come on, Sky Charles, it's time to go around the block. <laughs>